Incredible fossils discovered in East Africa's ancient soils, containing some of the earliest hominins that date back to six million years ago, have helped piece together humanity's controversial divergence from chimpanzees. Today we are exploring the species whose place in our ancestral tree is still up for debate, that is, Ardipithecus. In this video, we will take a close look at the numerous fossil discoveries surrounding the species, including the most complete early hominin ever discovered. The first Ardipithecus fossil was found in the early 1990s in Ethiopia's Afar region. Paleoanthropologist Tim White headed a team of researchers that achieved these significant discoveries. The most renowned specimen, being almost 50% complete when discovered in 1994, was Ardi, who dates back around 4.4 million years. This finding was significant because it pushed back the time frame of human development and provided important insights about Ardipithecus's anatomy and lifestyle. In total, over 1,500 fossil fragments have been discovered, representing at least 15 individuals. These skeletal remains have a distinct set of characteristics, some more basic and ape-like, while others are more evolved and human-like. To understand where Arthropithecus fits into the larger evolution tree requires knowing the difference between hominini and hominidae. All great apes, including humans, chimps, gorillas, and orangutans, belong to the hominidae family. Within this family, the tribe hominini is more specific, including current humans as well as our direct ancestors and closest relatives, following the break from the common ancestor with chimps. Arthropithecus is categorized as a hominini, which means it is more closely related to humans than chimpanzees. This categorization is important because it allows us to understand the precise features and adaptions that evolved in the lineage that led to modern humans. Ardipithecus is helping us pinpoint the evolutionary alterations that set early hominins apart from their ape ancestors. Now, interestingly, Ardipithecus is actually made up of two different species whose primary distinctions can be found in their dental morphology and minor variances in skeletal characteristics. These distinctions represent long-term evolutionary changes within the genus. Arthropithecus ramidus, represented by the iconic Ardi specimen, provides a fascinating glimpse into the early stages of human evolution some 4.4 million years ago. This species displays a unique combination of both arboreal and terrestrial traits, suggesting a lifestyle that involved climbing trees and walking on ground. One notable feature of ramidus is its divergent big toe, which likely aided in grasping branches while climbing, similar to modern primates like chimpanzees. And though the species is missing key bones like knee joints, its skeletal structure indicates capabilities for facultative bipedalism, meaning they could walk in twos if needed, which indicates a transition towards a more terrestrial lifestyle. But this species' most important characteristic rests upon Ardi's shoulders. Dental evidence shows that their upper canine teeth resembled more humans than chimpanzees and can tell us a lot about their diet. Their thin molar enamel suggests a diet primarily consisting of soft plant-based foods supplemented by potentially small animals. Their dental morphology differs from later hominins like Australopithecus afarensis, which had thicker enamel and likely consumed tougher, more abrasive foods. The dietary preferences of Ardipithecus ramidus likely reflect the ecological conditions of the environment where abundant plant resources would have been readily available, influencing the evolutionary trajectory of early hominins. And let's not forget about the other species named Ardipithecus cadaba, which dates back to around 5.8 to 5.2 million years ago and is known from relatively fragmented remains and some dental evidence, limiting our understanding of its anatomy and behavior. One of the biggest differences between Ardipithecus cadaver and Ramidus is that this species has larger canines similar to those of apes. How intriguing are these ancient discoveries? Subscribe to our channel and continue exploring the amazing journey of human evolution. Now, let's take a look at Ardipithecus's incredible physical appearance. They had a distinct set of physical characteristics that distinguished them from modern humans and apes. If we take Ardi, for example, she had a tiny brain around the size of a chimps, but her face's anatomy was less prognathic, meaning it projected less forward than that of apes. Her teeth were relatively tiny, with shortened canines, compared to those of apes, indicating a different social structure, like minimal social aggression between males and females. And while not as effective as contemporary human walking, 
Ardi's pelvis and foot anatomy suggest that she could walk upright, but with a stride that was most likely a combination of climbing and bipedal walking. This adaption is interesting because it demonstrates early attempts with bipedal movement, a key feature of human evolution. Additionally, the position of the foramen magnum, the hole in the skull through which the spinal cord passes, further supports the idea of bipedalism, as it is located more forwardly compared to that of quadrupedal primates, indicating an upright posture. What's surprising is that Ardipithecus challenges the idea that this species evolved from knuckle-walking apes and chimpanzees. Evidence suggests that Ardipithecus already existed as a partial bipedal species. The anatomy of the wrists and hands of Ardi lacks the adaption seen in knuckle-walking primates, indicating a different evolutionary path. This finding implies that the common ancestor of humans and African apes might not have been a knuckle-walker, suggesting an even more complex evolutionary scenario. Now, comparing Ardipithecus to modern human skulls reveals several differences. Ardi's skull is smaller, with the cranial capacity significantly less than that of humans. The brow ridge is more prominent in Ardipithecus, resembling that of early hominins and apes, rather than the reduced brow ridge seen in modern humans. The canines of Ardipithecus are larger and more pointed than those of humans, though not as pronounced as in modern apes. These differences highlight the transitional nature of Ardipithecus. If we take a look at their surrounding environment, we will find that it was significantly different from the open savannas often associated with later hominin evolution. Ardipithecus inhabited a region that was primarily woodland, interspersed with patches of forest and grassland. This wooded habitat shows that early bipedalism originated in a forested setting rather than open savannas. This challenges conventional wisdom and offers up new areas of investigation into the ecological and behavioral circumstances of early hominid evolution. Fossil evidence indicating plant remains and animal bones found alongside Ardipithecus fossils indicates a diverse ecosystem with plentiful resources. The woodland areas provided ample opportunities for climbing and foraging, allowing the species to exploit a variety of food sources. The climate during the time of Ardipithecus was likely more humid than the arid conditions seen in later periods. The wetter climate would have supported a lush, green environment, rich in fruits, nuts, and other plant foods. Their amazing ability to navigate both arboreal and terrestrial landscapes suggests that Ardipithecus had a flexible lifestyle, capable of adapting to different ecological niches their bipedal adaptions would have been beneficial for moving across open ground while carrying different supplies or food, while their climbing abilities were advantageous for navigating through trees to avoid predators, for example. This dual capability was crucial for survival in a changing environment. So how does Arthropithecus fit into our evolutionary timeline? To understand Arthropithecus's relevance, we must first understand where it fits in human development. Arthropithecus is an early branch of the human family tree, stretching back several million years before the well-known Australopithecus. This genus serves as an important connection between our last common ancestor with chimps and the highly evolved hominins that ultimately gave rise to Homo sapiens. Prior to the discovery of Arthropithecus, it is widely believed that the common ancestor of humans and chimps were more chimp-like. Arthropithecus, on the other hand, defied this concept by displaying a variety of features that were not exclusively ape-like. The fossils of A. R. Ramidus and A. R. Kadaba illustrate a transitional period, highlighting that the last common ancestor of humans and chimps was not a chimp-like species, but more a sophisticated creature with a mix of characteristics that were neither totally ape nor fully human. This emphasizes the notion that human evolution was not a straight line from ape-like ancestors to modern humans, but rather a branching process in which numerous hominini species experimented with different adaptions. Ardipithecus played an important role in bridging gaps in our evolutionary history. By researching their physical characteristics, environmental context, and evolutionary relevance, we have come to obtain a better understanding of the complex web of variables that impacted the genus of modern humans. But Ardipithecus' discovery isn't the only one that has helped piece together our past. Check out our huge selection of videos about human evolution and join us on the incredible adventure that led to the creation of us, Homo sapiens.